Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and today I'm continuing the repair of my 1968 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia engine. In the previous video, I reassembled the engine after installing new pistons, cylinders, and heads. I also addressed several engine overheating issues. However, after the engine was reinstalled, I discovered a problem with head studs pulling out of the crankcase, which was causing the heads to not seal properly. At first, it was only one stud, so I thought I would install a self-tapping head stud so I wouldn't have to remove the engine for a third time. So why don't you join me as I install a self-tapping head stud into my Carmen Ghia engine. I'd like to spend a moment on safety. There's nothing more important than keeping you and your loved ones safe. Be sure to read, understand, and follow the safety rules for your tools. Using your tools properly will greatly reduce the risks of personal injury and always use the appropriate eye, hearing, and respiratory personal protective equipment. Make sure you have a good Volkswagen manual, like John Muir's How to Keep Your Volkswagen Alive, or a Bentley or Hayes guy. If you're following along, you're doing so at your own risk. And if you don't feel comfortable doing any of these activities, then don't. Now let's get started. Previously, I reinstalled the engine in my Carmen Ghia after installing new pistons, cylinders, and heads. After I started it for the first time, oh, I discovered that the number one cylinder intake valve was misadjusted. This came back to haunt me in the form of a stripped head stud. However, it didn't show up until after I had removed and reinstalled the engine for the second time while trying to resolve overheating problems. I was checking the torque of the lower head studs after the overheating issues reappeared when I discovered that the number one cylinder rear stud was stripped. Uh -oh. I didn't want to remove the engine again, so I tried installing a self-tapping head stud that I could install while the engine was still in the car. What is a self-tapping head stud? It's a 10 millimeter head stud with an 11 millimeter self-tapping thread on one end. It's supposed to force and cut its way into a stripped hole. I searched on the internet and didn't find any information on how to install it, but I talked to the local beetle mechanic where I purchased the studs and he said I needed a lot of end force to get it started. There are four lower stud holes that are open to the crankcase. Number one front, number two front, number three rear, and number four rear. Using self-tapping studs on these holes is a little tricky because any metal shavings from the self-tapping process can get into the oil. Luckily, the one I was replacing was the number one rear, which is a blind hole that traps all the chips. I put a couple nuts on the 10 millimeter end of the stud, one larger than the other, and I tighten them hard against each other. That way, I can use a smaller socket when I'm driving the stud in and a larger socket when I'm pulling the stud out. Since the nuts are always tightening against each other, they won't loosen. Next, I inserted the stud into the head, but the stud was just a little too large, so I had to thread it through the head. Then I had to work it past the lower cylinder air deflector plate. Finally, I got to the crankcase. However, I couldn't get it started no matter how much force or hammering I did. So I pulled the stud out and examined the starting threads. There just wasn't any thread that would grab inside the hole to pull in the stud. I figured I needed to modify the starting thread. The first thing I did was add a couple of cutting grooves right at the tip to enhance the cutting process. I used a little diamond wheel and a dremel. This will collect chips, but with the open holes that I mentioned before, it might also allow those chips to enter the crankcase. The next thing I did was to change the profile to sharpen the starting threads. This helps to develop enough bite to pull the stud into the hole. I used a three-sided file on the first three threads. <laughs> 
After I modified the threads, I reinserted the stud and forced it into the hole by prying on the ratchet with a piece of wood. I used a little grease on the end to capture the chips so I could pull them out after every one or two revolutions. After the first three threads, there was enough bite that the stud would pull itself into the hole so I didn't need to pry anymore. Every couple threads, I would pull out the stud, wipe off the chips, and re-grease the end before I started again. Since it was a blind hole, I blew the chips out every now and then. Do not do that with an open hole. Eventually, the end of the stud was even with the rest of the lower studs. I removed the double locking nuts on the end of the self-tapping stud and reinstalled the head washer and head nut. Then I loosened the other lower stud nuts and then evenly retorqued all of them to 23 foot pounds. I reinstalled the rocker arm assembly, set the valve lash, and reinstalled the valve cover. At this point, the engine ran great. However, after a trip on the freeway, it started to run hot again. After checking all the lower studs again, I found that several studs on the numbers 3 and 4 cylinders were also starting to pull out. Bummer! Thanks for joining me today. We used a self-tapping head stud to replace one of the lower studs on my number 1 cylinder without removing the engine. That stud worked great, but unfortunately, I later discovered that several other studs on the numbers 3 and 4 side were also starting to pull out. I probably need case savers, but winter is arriving in Ohio. I don't like the cold, and it's cold in the garage, so I'm going to wait to tackle that job until next spring. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down, and leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon!